One, a seven-year-old, is traveling with her new parents, Eric and Andrew, at their remote lodge in Burlington Region, New Jersey. During her visit, Wynne is moved toward by a secretive outsider named Leonard. At first beguiling, Leonard makes sense of that he wants Juan and her folks' assistance to save the world. While the two get to know one another getting grash hoppers, Wynne becomes dubious when three others appear with shoddy weapons. Wynne escapes to caution Eric and Andrew yet the guests break into the lodge prior to tying them up, with Eric supporting a blackout. Leonard and his friends Sabrina, Adrian, and Redmond guarantee to have never met before this day and have zero desire to hurt the family, however somewhat recently, they have been constrained by dreams and an obscure ability to track down the family. The gathering predict a forthcoming end of the world wherein Leonard claims seas will rise, a plague will drop, the sky will fall, lastly a ceaseless dimness will dive. This must be deflected on the off chance that the family kills one of their own as a penance. They are cautioned that, while they will endure the end times, in the event that they don't decide, they will be ill-fated to be the last individuals alive. Eric and Andrew accept the gathering is lying and the assault is established in disdain and dreams. At the point when the family will not pick, the guests direct an unusual custom in which they cover Redmond's head with a material and beat him the tar out of with their weapons. Eric, who is concussed, accepts he sees a figure of light as Redmond kicks the bucket. On the television, media reports destroying tidal waves, which Leonard says is the beginning of the end of the world. Andrew comes to accept that Redmond is really Jeff O'Bannon, a homophobe who attacked him in a bar a long time back, for which he went to jail. Andrew accepts O'Bannon found him as vengeance. Leonard, Sabrina, and Adrian question assuming Andrew is correct in battle with their responsibility, however keep up with that they trust their dreams. They uncover that Redmond's passing has briefly postponed the end of the world. The following day, the interlopers penance Adrian as Eric and Andrew won't pick a penance. The debacles go on as a plague spreads across the globe. Andrew demands the debacles are unintentional and the guests were expecting pre-planned news broadcasting. Sabrina portrays how she and different guests were driven by their dreams and impulses to think of each as other on the web, execute subtleties of their arrangement like their weapons, and to move ahead when they needed to stand up to. Andrew figures out how to get away and recovers his weapon from the vehicle and takes shots at Sabrina until she takes off. Andrew tracks down Redmond's wallet and demonstrates to Leonard that he was Jeff. Harmed from his assault and their tires sliced, Andrew accepts the four arrived in a truck close by and secures Leonard in the washroom. Sabrina breaks into the house, and Andrew lethally harms her. Leonard then, at that point, fools Andrew into coming into the washroom and overwhelms him, taking the weapon. Leonard actually forfeits Sabrina, and the transmission shows unconstrained plane accidents occurring all over the planet. Understanding their time is practically up, Leonard takes the three onto the back deck as the sky darkens and lightning starts to set the earth ablaze. Prior to forfeiting himself, Leonard lets them know they have just minutes to choose before it is past the point of no return and slices his throat. Eric currently accepts that the occasions are genuine, and the gatecrashers each address the four horsemen of the end times. Not believing when he should experience childhood in an obliterated world, Eric offers himself as the penance. He guarantees that he saw a light before the guests killed Redmond, and that he saw an eventual fate of the world actually making do and when is grown up, and Andrew is still there for her. Eric feels that they were decided to forfeit their family on the grounds that their family's adoration was unadulterated. Andrew then hesitantly shoots and kills Eric. Andrew and Wynne find the guests' truck with their effects that verify their accounts. They drive to a jam-packed close-by cafe, where news investigates the television affirm that the fiascos have died down and the world is saved. Getting back to the truck, the radio turns on and plays Boogie Shoes by KC and the Daylight Band, the tune Eric played for them on their drive to the lodge, as the two crash once again into the world.